All right, so second video here, and we're going to talk about the various phases um, that the market goes through, and this is crucial to understanding how smart money operates, and um, uh, they operate within these phases, so they, they behave differently depending on what phase uh, they're in at the time, so we need to have an understanding of these phases. Um, before we go any further into analyzing the candles and um, volume and all that. So let me switch the chart. All right. So here's the primary market phases as uh, described by Richard Wyckoff many years ago. And it still holds true. Um, so go through each one and talk about here. Now, there's basically a cycle that's going on. Now, this, in this chart, we're looking at a very clean, uh, you know, the primary phases in a very clean market. Of, of course, there's variables, uh, but you need to know the, the, basic, uh, the basic layout, the basic uh, phases um, before you could uh, get into further detail and read, read any variations on it. Um, so to look at this as a cycle, let's say you have a down move before this even, an accumulation again and an up move, so you can see how it could continue as a cycle. So we're talking about accumulation here to start. Um, the characteristics of each phase we'll start with. So the characteristics of accumulation is if you're coming down from a markdown phase, um, accumulation will begin uh, on high volume. So the first thing you're looking at is down bars going into new low price areas uh, of the downtrend and that hitting uh, some high volume, what we call stopping volume, stopping volume, and that's going to be uh, uh, confirmed if the low of the candle uh, that's hitting that high volume is not broken, uh, and there's no lower low made on the next candle. And I like to look at the one hour, by the way, I'm looking at the one hour chart to determine these phases. So accumulation, uh, most of the time, maybe 90% 90, 90 of the time, it's going to start out with a widespread high volume down bar during a down move. And the next candle to follow that on the one hour uh, would be bullish. An inside close uh, engulfing, uh, as long as there's no continuation to a new low on that close. There may be a pin below it, but no close below. And so that is 90% of the time, somewhere about there, is how you're going to start uh, the accumulation phase. So that's stopping volume. Uh, with the bull's reaction on the next candle. Then uh, you may or may not go through uh, accumulation for uh, whatever period of time that may last. could last for an entire session. It could last for a couple hours. So you have a range, basically a, r a range in price after that down move is stopped. And the characteristics to also confirm that this is still accumulation and that's accumulating buy orders. And we were talking about that in the last video, buying into down moves. So you, can, you would continue to see that sort of activity, that lower prices, and they may vary, of course, in the real world, uh, but the lower prices, the down moves, being stopped on increased volume with a bullish reaction. So that's the characteristics you'd be seeing here to confirm throughout, throughout a range that you're in accumulation phase. So what we were talking about before, those down moves being bought up Lower prices bring demand. Um, one characteristic you'll com commonly see in accumulation is if, uh, let's say, you have that low established and you have a finally a, a break below there and you have a high volume pin, and then the next candle also is bullish. That's that's called a spring, and that again would be telling you. You're in accumulation phase, and that usually marks the end of accumulation phase if you happen to see that. Uh, you know, sort of a fake breakout. Um, again, that's keeping in line with the idea uh, of buy low, sell high, buy into down moves, and um, buy in, in such a way that has not marked a price yet. So by the time you get to it, at the end of accumulation phase, smart money has built up long positions at the lowest price that they can get. Uh, without marking price up yet, without showing that they've done that, unless you're analyzing the market in this way. So there will come a point 
where there's no more sell pressure. Uh, let's say coming off of this down move that was coming into there, uh, all the traders that were going to go short expecting a continuation and that the trend was going to be their friend, um, you know, eventually you get to a point where there's really not many left. So the smart money looking for those down moves to buy into um, reaches a point where there's no more sell pressure and everybody's locked in in the wrong direction. So that is when we start to move up. So it's a lack of supply. Supply is selling. Demand is buying. So it's a lack of supply that's going to ultimately uh, you know, allow this uh, demand, force this demand to come through if there's no more selling. So that comes down to something we'll talk about later. Looking for not only the demand and the accumulation, but the lack of supply to give you that imbalance where you now have proven demand, a proven lack of supply, and that's where you can expect the accumulation to go into markup phase. So it's all logical. Um, so we go through these phases. And so here you would have a trending move. Here's the cause for the trending move that you could foresee. And you know, often you'll have pullbacks. You may have a channel. You have a regular trending move happen. And reaccumulation is basically uh, a trade that I take very often uh, as far as reaccumulation is when it pulls back to a 50 to 618 area and again hits that stopping volume and does that same type of activity. The reaccumulation tends to not last as long as the initial accumulation. Accum accumulation. The reaccumulation could be shorter, could be one pin off, but uh, sometimes, you know, the point is you'll see the higher volume to stop those down moves and often at a 50 to 618 fib zone of the move up. Um, another opportunity to get in long uh, during a markup would be on a no supply and we'll talk about that. And we'll also talk about how to handle trading in this area and where to get long in anticipation of that up move. Um, and then eventually you run into uh, distribution which is basically accumulation in reverse. You'll run into high volume, you may go into a range, you want to see the higher volume points at the top, you may get a fake breakout above and you want to see the lower volume points at the bottom showing that there's more sell activity selling into the up moves than there would be buy activity. So there would be more supply than demand. We can call this supply coming in. And, you know, as smart money has marked a price and it's taking profit and then going short, uh, it hasn't shown itself in price. And, again, it still appears to be an uptrend. So it goes through these cycles. Uh, now, what else do I want to get into in this video? I think if I'll show a quick version of this on the chart. We've had uh, markup reaccumulation repeatedly here in the last couple of weeks. So here's our down move, mark down. We run into accumulation. In this case, it wasn't a very long lasting accumulation, but again, this widespread bar on high volume with that bullish reaction starts to confirm what's going on in this area if it wasn't too clear beforehand once we get into uh, the major trading of this day it becomes very clear and that's also a good example of that fake breakout that I was talking about so that high volume widespread down bar bullish reaction uh, so that was uh, accumulation and buying of, after a markdown we go into a markup phase and you can see again the characteristics uh, here on a pullback we're talking about reaccumulation after a markup and you see that same widespread High volume is a doji. Mention that. Why that happens? Buying into the down moves and matching those sell orders with buy orders before market price up, and then uh, continuation. The uh, markup continues. So there, you, you can see it going through that cycle. Uh, something to point out here. You may be saying, "Well, what about that high volume here?" Um, the reaction to high volume points is what confirms them. So in this case, that high volume down bar. If it was another bearish bar candle then that would not confirm that this is stopping volume. So we need that to confirm. In this case, uh, if we had a bearish reaction, that would be showing weakness in this up move, and maybe that this markup is failing. But you can see the reaction is bullish. And um, so the markup goes, it reaccumulates. Uh, another markup, again, widespread, high volume down bars, even on a Friday here. Continuation. And the other thing I want to show about these is like I was just saying there is the how common the fibs come into play. If I draw the first move up, is that 50 
bounce again, 50 to 618 zone. You see that happen again. If you take from the low of that reaccumulation to when it starts to pull back, you would have that again, 50 to 618. Looking for that long. Uh, in this case, it didn't come that low, but this is actually the example in the first video. Um, I think there's another 50 to 618, so it's been an easy, uh, easy couple of weeks. There's another one, again, showing that high volume, that bullish reaction. There's an example where reaccumulation didn't take too long, uh, although you can say it started here already. Not the healthiest markdown, and not the healthiest uh, down move there. That widespread uh, into 50 fib seeing that demand come in. That was the example we used. So you can see how common that setup is during a strong trend, markup reaccumulation. So we go through these phases, you, you hit, uh, again, we were talking about the start of the accumulation phase, the start of the distribution phase. And that is possibly happening here. This was Friday towards the, the last few hours of the session. And you can see a widespread up bar with a bearish reaction. See, that's the opposite of what we were talking about on the bottoms looking for the widespread down with the bullish high volume. So this is the first line of distribution. So once I saw this candle, widespread, pin on top, high volume, and then I saw this reaction, bearish, I said that's it, there's no more looking for longs anymore. This is possibly a distribution phase. And of course I have until Monday and getting into London session I would have to uh, worry about getting into a trade and I can see if this continues to show that this is distribution phase and I'd be looking for a short. Um, but one, of, one of the common things things that it may do is come back to test this level. Oh, it actually pretty much did that. Previous resistance becomes support. Uh, I could possibly come and test this level if there's going to be real sell pressure coming in. But that has confirmed weakness there. When you saw that candle pattern, and you can see the next two candles were bearish. As much as, you know, as big as that up move was, Caught a lot of traders, I'm sure, long, and uh, the weakness was shown, though, selling to that up move. So we call that supply coming in and seeing that that could be the start of a distribution phase. And again, we'll get more into uh, entries and using the five-minute chart for entries. Uh, so this was, video was to cover the phases, and uh, I think we did that pretty well. So we'll move on.